world and welcome to the James Strong Show podcast, podcast number 162. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for making us a part of your day. I appreciate it. This podcast was recorded on the afternoon, actually the evening of Thursday, March the 5th from the James Strong Studio in Western St. Charles County. Guests in studio, they've been in before. Uh, they're Renaissance folks, and they just came back from a 19-day adventure in Southern California. Joe Shaper, Eugene Vale, welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. 19 days. Man, I, I, when you told me you were going to do this, I thought to myself, I'm really glad they can do this. And then I thought to myself, I'm really jealous because I'd love to do this. And I, to be honest, I don't know which one I thought first, happy for you or sad for me. <laughs> How was it? Well, the, the the truth was 36 hours out and 36 hours back was on Amtrak. That's right. You You didn't take a plane. And we didn't drive. And people were confused when you said, hi, we're going to California. Well, are you going to drive or are you going to go on a plane and you go, nope, train. Now, how did, now, how did you get there? I mean, I, I know by train, but where did you pick up the train and, and what was the route that you took? Well, we, we live in Pacific, so we picked up the train at Washington, Missouri. Okay. That's the St. Louis to Kansas City run. And then we changed trains in Kansas City. They call it the Southwest Chief because I guess it's not super anymore. Uh, they but used to call it the Super Chief? Yeah, that's okay. the one that's Chicago to Los Angeles. Yeah, okay, okay. Now it's just a plain old chief. Well, Southwest Chief. Okay, Southwest Chief. Uh, then I guess you, did you, do you roughly follow Route 44? How does it work? Well, it's, it's really nowhere near Route 44. It does kind of, uh, once you get into uh, New Mexico, it starts to follow 40, which is mm. all, pretty much following old Route 66 at that point. Yeah. But Forty years old. It goes uh, due pretty much uh, due west out of uh, Kansas City, and then turns uh, southwest through the corner of Colorado and uh, through Albuquerque, and that's where it turns more due west again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy the the train ride? Train rides are always fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we got a full bedroom sleeper this time, which was kind of interesting. How so? Well, we've had a roomette before, which is kind of, uh, w w which d does fold down bed things, but the full bedroom actually has its own toilet and shower. Okay, so you don't have to use the, the community facilities. Mm -hmm. Very good, has very good. Two beds, has a chair, has a little table. Uh, definitely not roughing it in a, cou in a coach. And you uh, you actually took the train, and where did you get off, I should ask? Barstow. Barstow. That was an adventure. <laughs> because it got into Barstow at 3.40 a.m. Now, those of you who don't know, Barstow is, uh, that's not quite, that's not quite Los Angeles. No. It's, it's in, um, is that Kern County? I'm not sure. Barstow, I've got, I brought a map out here. Barstow is, uh, it's in the Mojave Desert. Uh, just north of Victorville. I'm looking at a map to see that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's a, it's not a big town at all. Not too far from Newberry Springs where they, uh, they, they filmed a couple of movies, but, uh, how was, how was Barstow an adventure? Uh, well, it was three forty in the morning and we discovered that although there's a Barstow taxi service, there isn't a Barstow taxi service. Not at that time of the morning. Not at all, but we can get to that on the way back. Uh, but Joe is a genius, and she got out her cell phone and checked on Uber and Lyft. And Joe? The, this was basically the morning of the Super Bowl. Okay. Oh, the, wow. The very early morning of yes, the Super Bowl. 3.40 a.m. <laughs> and trains are not coordinated with... Uh, uh, Rent a car, rental cars. Okay. The same way an airport is always, you know, there's a rental car somewhere. They're I not. think Chicago's an exception, but other than that, no. Well, anyway. So basically, we needed to get a little bit over two miles from uh, the station 
to a Motel 6 that we had made arrangements that we were going to be coming in in the middle of, you know, the morning. Sure. And just, you know, crash for, you know, five hours. and then, Right. Make sure they held your room so that you right. didn't show up. And say, ah, you didn't show up till 3.30 in the morning. I figured you weren't coming. And and there were, then it was a two-tenths of a mile walk down to the rental car. Okay. Uh, the only rental car that is in uh, operation on Sundays in this town is Budget. None of the rest of them. They exist, but only Monday through Friday. Well, to be fair, unless you're at the airport around here, you it's hard to find a rental car that's open on a uh, rental car company that's open on Sunday. So I, I don't know the Barstow has an but, international But anyway, airport. they did mess up the motel reservation, but Joe straightened it out. But, but the interesting thing is neither one of us had ever uh, – dealt with uh, phone apps with uh, cars or anything like that, had a vague notion that there were things like Lyft and Uber because uh, my my late brother-in-law's nephew actually works for one of them in Austin. So it was like, okay, fine, how are we going to get from here to there? And just started playing with the phone, and some guy after on, on the Lyft side, some guy uh, came back. And and he said, my name's Nicholas, and I'll be there in 10 minutes. Nice. And turns out he had actually gotten up to go to the bathroom and looked at his his call, <laughs> his little call call phone or whatever, and, hey, he got a he got a affair in the middle of the night. So don't criticize those people who uh, get up to go to the bathroom and check their email on the way. This, this was our salvation. And he actually made a buck off of it, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what was your reason for going to California? Uh, going to California to visit friends. Okay, so you have friends that live out there. Well, then. and her business partner. Right. Okay. The, the fellow, well, you know, the Steve Nagel, the guy that I'm... Had the doing, the doing author, the, the poet. With. Right. Okay, okay. He lives out there. He lives in Palm Desert. Okay. And we spent a week with him, and then we went up and spent a week with my girlfriend, who was from Cedar Hill, Missouri, but... Uh, her husband is an artist for uh, the China Lakes Naval Base. Okay. His, uh, his adult uh, occupation has been uh, drawing airplanes and boats and ships and other things for the Navy. Very good. One, one has to ins- insert where, where else would China Lakes Naval Station be but in the Mo- middle of the Mojave Desert, and there is no China Lake. It's dry. It's a dry lake bed. That's correct. Mm-hmm. People say, wait a minute. It's called, uh, they say, well, how can you have a naval base in the middle of the desert? So it's it's a China Lake. It, <laughs> it, but there's no lake. Exactly. It's, it, it's actually uh, an ordnance facility for uh, training on... Uh, shooting big guns and missiles and things. Their claim to fame is they invented the Sidewinder missile. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I know, also know they have a lot of experimental aircraft because I believe when I was in the Mojave one time, when I saw my UFO, I was not, we were not far from China Lake, and I assumed that that was an experimental aircraft that we saw. But it was nothing like anything I've ever seen before. Mm-hmm. I'll just say that. But But it was right over the vicinity of China Lake. But uh, but that is basically if if you live in that area, Ridgecrest, mm-hmm. uh, the whole area, you're probably working for directly or indirectly for the Navy base. I'm going to guess. Not, uh, and we might as well insert the big earthquake they had last year. They did. Mm-hmm. Uh, it didn't cause a ton of damage, if I remember, but it was a it was a big uh, it was a big deal. It didn't cause a lot in Ridgecrest, but down the ro- highway in Trona. The the city is the town is still in pretty bad shape. Have you ever been to Trona before? Yes, twenty eight okay. years ago when okay. we did the same thing in coach. Okay. Uh, no offense to the citizens of Trona, but how can you tell that an earthquake devastated the town? Because it's just not much. The last time I was in Trona, they didn't have a filling station. It's is not not a whole lot there. They, uh, I no, guess but they, what is is now all boarded up or in or a pile of rubble. The last time I was in Toronto, half of it was boarded up anyway because the, there's a there's a chemical plant that's right there, and that's where the people work, like a borax or chemical strip mine. Uh, it's another dry lake bed, Cyril, isn't it, Joe? Mm-hmm. Cyril's like, mm-hmm. and actually, the mineral that they mine is Trona. That's the name that's of the, the material. Name of the mineral. Yes. What do they use it for? It's sodium carbonate. 
Washing soda. Okay, like the borax. Right. Basically. Well, borax is based on boron, not sodium carbonate. Okay. So it's a, let me, let me rephrase that then. So it's a, uh, a laundry detergent booster. Right. Is it's, that more accurate? It's, it's, one of, it's one of the alkali minerals that are very common in the desert. Yeah, okay. you throw throw a little hydrogen in it, it becomes baking soda. There you go. There you go. But don't they say that about half the elements on the periodic chart are in those lake deposits, Joe? I think so, but most of them are in very small quantities. Mm-hmm. So you enjoyed Ridgecrest, I guess. What, I mean, what did you what did you think of the town? Town is interesting because okay, it's in the desert. They have, I understand, about a maximum of five to ten inches of rain a year. Yeah, that includes any snow that might fall, and. Because of that, they don't have curbs. The, the The streets go up and down, the roller coaster like, mm-hmm. but they don't have you know like curbing and guttering and. There's and, no need for storm sewers, right? It basically, if it does rain, you know they'll find an arroyo and it'll be gone in two hours. Yeah, it, it's it, they have a, an annoyingly high speed limit in residential areas, like about forty. Really, and, and and but if you do it and you don't know any better, you come to one of these dips where there would ordinarily be a curb and a sewer. It's just a dip to carry the water when it rains, and you hit that at speed. It's like a, it's 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 like a, a speed bump on steroids. Well, I I have to ask. Uh, you talked about your rental car. What kind of rental car did you have? So I'd like to know these odd these odd factoids. I'd like to know uh, what, what people do. Well, we'd actually reserved a Ford Focus, but, and I was good to get there right when they opened. They apparently had a lot of people not bring their cars back. Uh, and yeah. the lady was in the process of canceling reservations on people. Uh, but those of us who were there managed to get, and we got a Kia something or other. Do you remember which model? I think oh. it was a Sedona. It might have been. Okay. That's the SUV. No. No. Uh, so it wouldn't be a Sedona, but it was a sedan though. Yeah. Right. It wasn't it was not it was wasn't a soul like mine. It mm-hmm. wasn't a little one. It was uh roughly a Taurus sized. Okay. Okay. Car. Uh like a Hyundai Sonata, a Kia, probably an Optima. Might have been a Yeah. I don't remember. You're a better person about cars than I am. A lot of, uh, a lot of, used, there used to be a lot of uh, Hyundai Sonatas and Kia Optimas for rental cars. That's kind of their Might have been mid, Optima, mid to, mid to big sedan. Know. Yeah. Right. It was very equivalent to the Focus. Yeah. A little, not, little not quite as good gas mileage. But yeah. Pretty equivalent. Yeah, Ford Focuses are good cars to get. Is it Focuses or Foci? Foci. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> I guess you just had one, so we don't have to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, but except that I think Ford's making a big mistake by discontinuing those. You know, I I, I think all the car companies are because that Ford Focus was a wonderful car. Uh, the Chevy uh, Cruze was a wonderful car. They did this back in the 70s, and apparently they didn't learn. Well, why did they do it? Remember. They t- say they don't make money on these little cheap cars. Well, and nobody wants them because gasoline it's is cheap It's not now. that nobody wants them, but they don't make any money on them. And they make money on the big ones. But what happened in the 70s, and I predict this is going to happen again, is your first-time car buyers were forced to the imports because the U.S. companies were not making them. When the first-time car buyers traded up, they traded. Guess what happened? The, the U.S. companies lost market share. Exactly. Yeah. Because that's when the imports started bringing in their SUVs and their more luxury mm-hmm. things. Uh, there's uh, brand loyalty with automobiles works very well. And this is, I, I'm predicting they're going to lose market share again because they did this to themselves once before and they're doing it again. I, I think you're right. And the funny thing is, is, is I hear all the excuses. Uh, they say, well, you know, we can't make money on the cars, so we have to build the SUVs and the trucks. Hyundai still builds 
cars, Toyota still... 